Hello and welcome! Today we are going to be taking a look at the anchors and margins feature of the control node system. Now, generally in Godot Engine, people quite like the UI, and that's because of these anchors and margins. They're very versatile, they're very useful, if you can get your head around them. I spent like a year not really knowing what to do with them. They're really simple. I was looking at these numbers here. I was thinking, okay, this does something, I don't really get it, and changes that, yikes. And then there's the whole margins thing. Don't worry about changing the numbers, because there is actually a even better way. It's this layout button at the top. So you see, I have this control node here named anchors and margins. Oh no! And this uh, this 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 control node here is a direct child of the viewport, which is this big rectangle. So if I press this full rect button, it will expand to cover the full rect. You can see it changes the anchors here. Don't worry too much about the numbers. There's a whole explanation if you want to get into the numbers. This is a practical guide, which means this is how I use them, and I don't really want to try explaining the technical side because, quite frankly, it is complicated and confusing. The buttons are easy, they have little icons. You can't go wrong with that. So you have your full rect control node. Now the interesting thing about the control node UI system is that if you have another control node, let me just make another one here, and you set this one to full rect, it will be, well, just to make it a little bit more obvious, how about I make that a color rect, because I like color rects, and let's make this, let's make this a, a teal, I don't know what teal, there you go, look at that. So this, this color rect is the full size, it covers the full rect, even of the parent control node. And so we can change this, it'll always be that. These little um, tags, the green spiky things, the pins, they correspond to the anchor points. So if, in theory, you changed the size of the viewport, um, it would scale this. So that's quite neat. Would you look at that? Basically, that's all you need to know about, the, about that. If you want to do any other layout, maybe, you don't want it to be the full rect, you want something this big, and you want it to be just in the exact center of this other control node, well, do this center one, like that. And now you can see these pins, these anchor points, are right in the middle. You can see it corresponds here to the numbers, and uh, no matter what size this is, it will always be centered. Now I use this quite a lot for link buttons. If you have a link button, um, let me just make one right now. Now I quite like link buttons. I like link buttons a lot, in fact. They're very nice. They're like buttons, but they're just text. It's wonderful. Um, issue is though, you can't center them. No matter what size the link button is, it's always stuck to the to the top left, and you could use some code to center it based on the size, you know. But there's a best way to do that is just to put it in the center with the that's invisible because of the color I have here. But no matter what size that is, that's in the center. That's how you do it. Super easy. And if you wanted it to be center top, you can do that. Center bottom, you can do that. But what if you know that's right at the bottom? Now we're thinking. What if you want it to be offset a little bit from the bottom? You don't want it to just be right hugging the bottom of the screen. Well, you have these anchor points, which are going to stay relative to the bottom. What you can do, you just drag it up a little bit. Hopefully that didn't change anything about the anchors. I don't think it did. It will still be relative, and you know why? It's because when I move it, the anchors stay the same. It's these margins which change. So you can think the anchors will anchor your node to the parent node. The margins are just kind of an offset. And that makes sense when you think about well, what those words mean, I guess. So I encourage you to sort of play around with this. These will keep you happy for a good amount of time. If you want to, sometimes you want to anchor it. Say that you, say that you spent an hour positioning your nodes like this and it's perfect, it can't be better, I mean, this is a work of art right here. If you had to do this, but you then you realized, damn it, 
I wanted to center this node. I want it to stay relative to the center, but it's not. It's going all over the place. Look at this. That's not right. I want it to stay relative. Oh no. Uh, okay. So due to I don't I just pressed Control Z a whole bunch of times, and I think it deleted everything in my scene. I'm not quite sure what happened. I think I pressed it a bunch, queued up a bunch of undo actions, and then I closed the tab. So anyway. Um, ignore that, that was, I guess, lost. Um, I'm just gonna set this up real quick. So this is supposed to be centered. This one, it isn't really doing anything, actually. It's, uh, by default, I think the anchor is at the top left. So you can see here all the anchor points are at the top left. That's just the default situation. So imagine, this is my new work of art. This is the 2.0. And you know, it's okay, it's okay. But when I resize this parent node, it's not doing it properly. I want this to be anchored to the middle. My point is, you can go to the anchors only. It won't reposition anything. It'll just place the anchors into the middle. And now you can see it does that very well. So I think that's pretty much everything for the anchors and the margins. I mean, it's not super complicated. Just press this button a whole bunch. I'm not sure what that one is. Just do that one and this one sometimes. That'll be 99.5% of use cases. However, sometimes you have got a container um, and you may not know what a container is. It's all these things. Uh, you can have a scroll container, which I mentioned. It's very useful. You can have grid containers. Vbox containers are very useful. I like Vbox containers. Um, so I'll, I'll use the VBox container as my example. I think the base container doesn't really do anything. Um, I think these all have logic implemented for how they contain the things that are their children. Um, let's do the VBox because I know that does something. So for any of these, um, I, th I think by default they try to squish down their children to the minimum size for some reason. I don't know why. So if you have anything as a child of a container, it will be squished. I, it must be some kind of space efficiency thing. Um, but this VBox container has a size, so let's play with these size flags. We have fill, expand, expand does that, it will. Uh, shrink send or shrink end, just press these, turn them on and off. You can make two, you can make three, you can make four. Um, I guess it's that's what the expand one does, uh, is it will try to do that. I'm not entirely sure what fill does. Um, some of these do something sometimes. Quite frankly, don't touch these. Don't touch the size flags. I don't... they really do confuse me. I mean, I know that they have some usage. If you're using uh, size flags that much, you know, you, you, you may be uh, a bit out of my depth. So basically, uh, I don't really understand size flags that much. I don't use them that much, so how useful can they be? I think they're getting some alteration in Godot 4, so I'm also not feeling particularly obliged to learn how to use them. I have truly never used them. Don't use them. My, my honest practical advice is to ignore them, set the minimum size when you need to, mess around with them, just toggle them on and off if you feel like it, and for everything else, use the layout button with the anchors only. Don't worry about the numbers. That's how I do it. That is my, my practical guide. That is my teaching recommendation. Um, hopefully that is useful to some of you. Not, not the ones who know what the numbers mean, but some. So if you enjoyed this video and you are looking for more, please subscribe, like, um, put graffiti of the Godot engine in your local city write letters to your MP that your government should fund the Godot engine. I think it would be great to have uh, that kind of support. So, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Goodbye.